Our guest Hello. today is one of the very few queens of color in Quebec on the drag scene. I thought that was an awesome uh, thing to highlight. Uh, obviously, you're proud to represent yeah. your community. We are talking to Kiera, one of the queens from the very first season of Canada's Drag Race. And although her Mariah Carey impression during Snatch Game may not have gotten many emotions from the judges, see what I did there? <laughs> Kiera has plenty more up her sleeve, and she's here today to talk to us all about her drag career and what's up next. Hey, girl, hey! Woo! Hello, hey, girl, hey. <laughs> How are you guys? We're great. The question is, how are you in that wig on the beach? OMG, it's hot. I'm doing amazing. I'm living my, um, oh my God, what's this, <laughs> what's this series with, um, you know, like the bombshells just coming out of the water, just, you know, like Baywatch. the lifeguards. <laughs> Baywatch. I'm living my Baywatch fantasy right now. The sand <laughs> goddess. You look a lot better than Pamela Anderson, though, I will tell you that. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I love her. She's an icon. <laughs> <laughs> Whose boobs are bigger, though? Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> oh my God, look at that outfit. This is a podcast, so people listen. Thank you so much. We're on YouTube, too, so we can see things like this. That is a great talk. <laughs> the theme is orange, beaded. It's fun. <laughs> it's very, like, Carnival-esque, and I think everyone's yes. missing that this year because of COVID, so we're yes. not out there partying for Carnival, so that's giving me, like, definitely jamming vibes. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying. All right, Kira. So you recently quit your job and put school on hold to focus full time on drag. And obviously it's working out. You're having trouble balancing photo shoots and podcast interviews. And we all know how <laughs> successful your time on Drag Race was. Uh, so obviously so much. that was a good decision, right? You're happy you did that. I'm really happy I did that. Um, even like before Drag Race, it kind of was like, it was fun because like I, I could only focus on drag instead of like focusing on like job and school and stuff. So like, you know, when I dropped out and when I quit my job, I, I felt like I did a good, a good decision. And then I got on Drag Race and yeah, I thought it was going to be, <laughs> I, I, I knew it was going to be the good choice, I think. And you're so feeling. young, you can do whatever you want right now. You have your whole life ahead and whole career ahead of you. Right, that's it. <laughs> what were you studying in school? I was sitting film production, so um, yeah, I was really connected with also like filming the show. I'm just gonna sit here for the people at home. <laughs> you don't want to so, sweat yeah, your face I off. I don't want to sweat it. <laughs> I'm gonna get wet later though in the water still right now. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I was sitting film production. It was um, it's still a passion of mine, but I felt like I felt like when I discovered drag, it kind of overtook this passion, and yeah, I just. Uh, I like it. I like drag better now, but I like to combine the two. That must have been fun for you being behind the scenes on a reality show, is you got to see really? that like angle of what you wanted to do with your career, not necessarily film, but still production. Did you learn a lot from still. that? Yeah, it was fun to like be on the other side of the metal, to be on the other side of um, to to be on the other side of the camera, and just you know like being able to relax. I feel like it was like less stressful. I mean, it was stressful in a different way, but um, um, yeah, it was, um, it was fun to just be able to experience that other side. It was fun. Now, when Kiara was born, what made you decide to go with one name like Cher? Like just Jack, you know? No last name. Uh, I, just Jack. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I'm still part of this drag family and they're the Shadzis. And before, like, the, when I first started doing drag, I kind of associated with that name. But now, it, I, not that I don't associate with that today, but it's just that it's, you know, Shotzi is just, like, hard to write. And when I tell people, like, they don't really understand that they're like, Chachki, Shotzi. <laughs> so, yeah, so, like, I just decided to go by Kiara, and I decided to be the only one. <laughs> now, is that part of the same drag family as Rita Vega? Because she gave you your first gig, didn't she? Uh, she gave me my first gig in Montreal, but oh. um, I'm from Quebec. Yeah, exactly. So I'm from Quebec City. So I had like other people like supporting me over there. But when I came to Montreal, that's really where my, I think my career really blossomed and stuff. And she was one of the first, you know, like she heard of me from Quebec City and she was uh, the first one to give me my, my chances in Montreal. Now, while we're on the topic of her and talking about Montreal, there was a moment now, one thing I love about Canada's Drag Race is that you guys aren't super mean to each other. But there was one moment that I thought the back room was going to erupt because it became like a 
Montreal drag versus Toronto moment. Rita yeah. Baker kind of like went in and went like, hey girls, like it's not all about Toronto. And I sat there and went, <laughs> so Toronto's oh, drag race. oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? How do you feel about Montreal versus Toronto drag? Wow, um, I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like Rita was kind of, I don't really know their, like, the drag scene over there but from what i've heard it's kind of a bit more catty than it is in montreal i mean like yes of course we're all big personalities and stuff and even in montreal they are, there is some drama but i feel like and you know like we kind of see it also on the show like there's a bit more you know like digs and a bit more you know like you know just looking over there and oh what are they doing their outfit doesn't look good blah 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 and Rita and I were just working <laughs> so yeah I feel like we're really focused on like building a community in Montreal I don't know that much about Toronto but I feel like um yeah I, well I, I mean like I feel like also Toronto drag sometimes like when they get like in they get a lot more representation than we do in Quebec so in their opinion, you know, it's like the New York girls when they get on Drag Race and they're like, oh, New York is the best, has the best drag in the world, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, Toronto has some fierce drag queens, but I feel like we have different strengths and, you know, I feel like we proved that. So, yeah. Right. You know, Toronto, they always think they're the center of the universe. No matter what it comes down to, they are always think they're exactly. the center of the universe. <laughs> are you in Toronto? <laughs> no, no, no. We're in Ottawa and I'm from Vancouver. Ottawa. Yeah, Ottawa. There was no queens from Ottawa on this season. Uh, Scarlett from Ottawa. We know that. But I think she might be mm -hmm. the only one. I know, but I was talking to some Ottawa girls and I, I don't know why, but like most of them were like, no, I didn't apply. And I was like, well, you're so good. Like, why didn't you? They were like, eh. No. <laughs> I, I wouldn't like be surprised if we one. yeah I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if we maybe see them on season two. Oh, of course i'm pretty sure there's some a good talent. adriana x there's one here in adriana x i want her on season two tell your producer that she's listening <laughs> um, i love her so much Kiki so, Ko, i love her oh kimmy too yeah she's actually coming on the Kim, podcast kimmy, next week. really i love kiki ko as well they're all good. Look, it's like a Canadian drag family. And that's, again, what I just Isn't absolutely it? love about Canada's drag race and the drag community in Canada is it is a really big family. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, Kiara, when you say you're from a drag family, is that not to be confused with the ballroom culture that you're part of, too? Because I know you're big in the ballroom no, whole yeah. scene. Those are two different I sort am. of things, right? Exactly, yes. And so did you start yeah. ballroom first as a boy? Um, no, I started doing drag at first, and then when I moved to Montreal, like one year or two after going to Montreal, I kind of met some people because, like, uh, yes, I feel like I feel like I I found like my family in like my in the drag scene, but I feel like there's less queer people of color. And when I found out the ball the ballroom world, like I was like, oh my god, like this is like the scene. So that, that's like a, a scene that I really feel like I associate to, and I feel like I found like another sort of family another another branch <laughs> to say so yeah so oh, but I, I i went even like in the ballroom scene i do feel like i'm not a boy i i do the category called realness so i kind of did my job makeup and i realness is trying to it, it's almost like female impersonation so you want to look passable you want to look like you're you're passing you want to look like you can walk in the street and people don't really recognize you as a boy but to take you as a girl now, since we're talking about dancing and performance, we have to talk about your lip sync for your life. Thank I, you, you killed <laughs> it. You killed it. Thanks. Were you disappointed to find out that you were getting voted off? No, she was thrilled. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I was thrilled to go home. No, I was, I, I felt like I had more to show, of course. And I felt like, you know, like Sash game was just like a misstep. I feel like I could have, I, I could have done a good Sash game, but I feel like I, I didn't take the right choice and I didn't prepare. Well, I, it's not that I didn't prepare. It's just that I feel like the character that I took was really hard to um, to play and to improv and to be funny. <laughs> and I, you know, because I, I know Mariah Carey. Like, I'm, I'm one of the biggest, uh, like, I'm, I really, I, I'm a big, big, big fan of Mariah Carey. And even if I knew all the references, I felt like they never really, like, fit. And I was always second like, guessing myself. So when it came to, like, have a good answer. I always like the odd they never limited. So yeah. Would well, you want to know what? I thought you looked great, but it was very interesting when Stacy, I think it was, who said, 
if you had just rolled your eyes and said, oh, darling, at yeah. every answer, uh, that would have been more And I didn't even think of that. Mm. But when she said that, I was like, oh, my God, yeah, because then you would have been like true. a total cartoon character. But I in know, the moment, I, could, I really could have gone there. Yeah, I really could have gone like in the, oh, sorry, I'm going to take a bubble bath, mm, darling. <laughs> you know, I felt like I, I could have just like not given a, uh, can I swear on this show? <laughs> oh yes <laughs> or can we not okay i could have like not given a fuck right just been like okay like i'm just very blase and stuff and all sexed out and even like the boy i was just so stressed out and second guessing myself so much that i, I don't know was that if, a good if, moment if you could go back and pick and do it all over again the snatch game who would be your other character that you would do okay so um <laughs> there's this character called stacy mckenzie <laughs> I, I love her and you know like even like I, I thought about it in the workroom and then I was like oh my god but like I don't have the look and I didn't prepare for it but I you know like we we see her and we know how she acts and we know like how she talks and I'm Stacey McKenzie <laughs> yeah 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 so like it could have been like easier or I I and when I came back from the show I came home and I watched um the show glow up you know, uh, the, yeah. uh, have you seen it? It's like, a, it's on Netflix, it's a makeup competition. And there's Val Garland. She is amazing. Like, TikTok, marvelous. And, you know, <laughs> I, I feel like she had like all, all of these like catchphrases. And she has all like this, this personality that I could have played. And I feel like it would be unexpected because she's so like different f physically for me. But I feel like I, I could have maybe embodied her a bit more because she's so different, you know. Right, you have to pick like a really over the top, car already cartoony person and like yes, make it exactly. even more cartoony. Which is why you'd think Mariah yeah. would work because Mariah is a cartoon, but she's a very <laughs> precise cartoon. Stacy could have exactly. gone either way because you could insult one of the judges. Like it could either be seen as ballsy or like, girl, why'd you do that? Exactly. That's it. I feel that I felt like I it was too much of a risk and Snatch Game really stressed me out. So but I feel like if I really worked on the characterization and like on the on the character and how to characterize it, how to yeah, how to make it a caricature, I feel like I, I could have gone I could have done it. Well you had the splash. Safe. You had the splash really. That's half the battle with Mariah. The splash darling. Yes. <laughs> the splash darling. And is Mariah, you, is Mariah your biggest diva influence? Obviously, mine is right here on uh, my shirt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I love Mariah. Maybe not influence, but I feel like I, well, I always do. I, if I can do Mariah, like, w once every show, I do it. And I love her so much. And I love, like, her videos and stuff. And she's such an icon. I feel like maybe not for my drag, but I feel like, you know, like, she, she has, like, this charisma but she's also like over the top and she doesn't really like give a fuck and she's i, I don't know i just love her so much I, it's, she's really my favorite singer she is uh, who's um whose style do you like to embrace because right now you're giving me like all the rihanna vibes totally all of yeah her. i love rihanna S Thank you. <laughs> remember that one? Oh, i just um, i and you're giving i mean i don't know if it's the beach and the red hair you remind me of like the old school rihanna yeah remember when I mean. she yeah, yeah thank like, you yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, do you have yeah. any style inspirations? <laughs> of course, I love uh, Rihanna. I love everything that, you know, like, even like Stacey McKenzie or Naomi Campbell, you know, like tall models, you know, um, you dark skin or... Yeah, because you, you have legs yeah. for days. Like legs Thank for you. days. I'm pretty <laughs> sure your leg would come up to like my shoulder. I'm five two and a half. <laughs> oh, I'm six two. I'm six two. So. <laughs> right. Oh my God. And that's before heels? Yeah, before heels, yes. Oh my like god! Like in heels, I'm like a giant. But yeah, I know. Work it. It's that's crazy. Hot. <laughs> so Kiara, yeah, when you first hot. walked into the workroom and you saw all the other girls, or when you met each other, who did you think was going to be your biggest competition? Wow, um, I felt like uh, I felt like Jimbo was going to be, I think, a very very strong competitor because I, I you know, I, when she came into the workroom, I was like, okay, like. She's going to be different. She's going to be bringing something new that we've never seen on Drag Race. And I feel like everything that she can do, even if she, like, doesn't do her best and she's doing the most, I mean, like, she, she's amazing. But, like, even if she fucks up, I feel like it's going to be so different that they, they would have, I would have to keep her if I was a judge, you know? So, and also, like, um, I saw Tainomi and I was like, oh, my God, like, uh, another, like, girl that can perform the house down and that can really dance and that can really, like, 
to have such a strong name, I felt like she was going to be, like, I think my main competition because I felt like, you know, like, uh, I also, like, have, like, this type of drag that is a bit more fierce or that can dance and rock a lip sync. But um, I, I saw Priyanka, but I didn't see her as my biggest competition. But then I, I, I saw, like, how the competition was going, and I was like, okay, like, she's funny. She has charisma. She has strong personality. She's lovable. Like, everybody loves her, and she's... um a very strong um, performer as well. So yeah, I think she was my, my, my biggest competition there without me knowing it firsthand. You know something about Tainomi though? Um, speaking to when Jenna said about the camaraderie on the Canadian drag race, when she got voted off, I thought people were gonna be like, ha ha, serves a legend, right? Like she deserves to have her ego knocked down a few pace because she's such a big star in Toronto and everybody knows her. But yeah. it wasn't like that. You guys all really felt bad for each other. And I was like, God, change the channel, Jenna. This is like, <laughs> give us some uh, cattiness. <laughs> I mean, like, it, it's just that Tainomi is so nice and Tain everybody loves Tainomi. And it's not only because she has a big name, but like, she's truly amazing. And she, you know, like, she, she's really, she's such a warm person. And when she left, we like, we, we knew we were gonna miss her and we knew that, you know, like, I don't know, it, it wasn't fun to see somebody that everybody looks up to, just, you know, like being like criticized and not really knowing what to do and getting their head that, that deep. And it was just like really hard to watch, yeah. Ooh, sorry, but you just said something that made me think of, do you think her getting upset had anything to do with her elimination? Because there's some theories floating around online, both Juicebox and Tainomi had a breakdown right before they both got voted off. So does that show weakness to the judges? Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I cried and, you know, like we, I didn't so get did in Jenna. and I didn't even get in the bottom, you know, so. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, just, I, I feel, what? <laughs> oh, I was going to say, no, go ahead, finish it. Finish what you're saying. Okay. I, I Well, I think I was like, <laughs> I, was done. I was just saying that, um, yeah, I feel like showing vulnerability is also like a good thing on that race yeah. from what we've seen in the previous season. So I don't know if Canada decided to do differently, but I don't think so. I think it, it's, it's important to be honest and to show that you are also human and not just um, a, a fierce bitch that can lip sync and stuff. Yeah. Now you were one of the, are you the youngest? Were you the youngest contestant? I am the youngest. Yes. yes. Did you? Kain, but Kain was born in March and I'm born in July. So I feel like they're all going to answer Our that way. Our cancers. I am July baby too. Yeah. Oh, Happy I'm a Leo though, birthday. Like, I, I'm a, thank you. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Did you say you're a Leo? You're not a cancer? Yeah, I'm a Leo. I'm like July 28th, but I'm like on the cusp, I think. So I'm like, Cancer, I'm like Cancer Leo, and my right. Go with Leo. Cancers, cancers are a water. handful. <laughs> uh, but I know I, I really get along with. You. Did you did you ever feel like your age was gonna was a disadvantage for you going against some veterans? You know, some real veterans. Um, I never felt like my age was. Um, well, I don't know. I feel like watching back, I feel like I. Well, no, not really, because because I was so young and I'm still young. I feel like I have this fresh energy and I have like this confidence that maybe like oh, people that are a few years older don't have anymore or really like kind of are trying to. I feel like we, we still have like this innocence and like, yeah, I'm going to do this and whatever happens, happens and I'm going to go all the way. And I feel like I, I really had this drive and I feel like, you know, like, in the game, I don't feel like it was a disadvantage for me, but I feel like people like often see it as, you know, like, I feel like people really underestimate me because like, it's my, you know, I'm still in my young years of my career. So yeah, I feel like people kind of was like, oh, you know what, like, she's kind of mad. And, you know, I kind of, I, I, I shouldn't, but I read some of the comments. <laughs> and um, I know that some people like when, when I exited and said like, if you want to be an all star, it's okay. Like, hey. I feel like yeah. people like were like, well, oh, yeah, right, what, right, right, right. <laughs> sure, Jen. So yeah, but, but I feel like people still underestimate me sometimes because like, but I, I do feel like I, I, I'm a strong drag queen, so I don't really give. Right. Myself. Sometimes you want to be underestimated. <laughs> True. Yeah, especially in the competition. Like I didn't care. Like I was like, yeah, maybe people are gonna underestimate me, but right. you know, it's kind of my secret weapon to be able to be as good as some experience in season queen you know since we're talking about underestimating was there any other girls that you underestimated when you first started hmm 
I feel like after episode one, I underestimated Lennon because I felt like, okay, like he's been doing drag for a year and a half and you're already in the bottom. So like, you know, acting challenge, like I got along with Lennon, but then like in the acting challenge, she killed it. And I was like, oh, okay, she's here. <laughs> right. Yeah. And um, is that I underestimate? Oh, oh I, I underestimated Alona. Cause I was like, oh, okay, like you're a look queen, like you're you're kind of a drama queen and stuff, like you're not gonna last <laughs> long. And now she's still she's still there. Episode seven, episode yeah. six, yeah. no, episode seven. We just episode watched seven, six. Top six is still there. Seven yeah, tomorrow. Just it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, but you know that's so funny. A drag queen calling another drag queen a drama queen, like that. <laughs> that's something. Uh, right. But, but like Lemon, you know, I like you, we see it on the show. I mean, like I'm not like the the most like. Uh, dramatic well i can be dramatic but i'm not gonna be like fighting and like you know like you know just you know, creating drama and stuff like I, i'll fight back but I, i'm not the one to attack yeah what, what, what was your Lemonade. favorite favorite challenge to do on the show my favorite i feel like my favorite challenge was probably episode two the acting challenge because i really felt in my comfort zone i really felt like i you know it was kind of it, it was not easy because we had to like you know like when you get the text like you kind of have to to learn it in so such a short amount of time and um oh my god can you hear the birds in the background yeah <laughs> there's like some goose yeah <laughs> are you scared of birds jenna's scared of birds no i'm a bird because my looks are chip, 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 chip. <laughs> 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 anyways uh yeah I thought, what was the question again i'm sorry the, like, that you were talking about I how much you love the acting challenge <laughs> yeah i love the acting challenge because i really felt in my comfort zone and even though like we had to learn the statistics in a short amount of time i felt like i got i did did it already but i i feel like i yeah i felt often i felt good i felt like i people really saw me as a strong competitor there yeah, right. Feel, as like an, a well-rounded performer, like yes, I can dance, exactly, yes, I can yeah. lip sync, and yes, I look really good. But bitch, I can act too. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have any makeup tips? I, when I have a lot of girlfriends, like real girls, and they always say, "Oh my god, drag queens do such good makeup." Do you have a secret right. tip that you can give to real women that you think maybe they don't know? Okay, so um, what I do for my makeup to be like super long lasting, because you know, like even like right today, I'm probably gonna get into in the water with my makeup, and usually when I get into water with my makeup, it kind of stays there. So what I do is like almost like it's kind of extreme, but like almost like every step of my makeup, I'm gonna spray myself with some setting spray. <laughs> so yeah, some may not well makeup spray, makeup setting spray. Anyway, you get it. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah that's what spray. I do. And it's kind of, it's, yeah, it's setting spray. So like I, it, it just sets it there. And the more you use it, the better it is. And, you know, like every, between like every step or, you know, like all the way, not just at the end, not just, and even at the beginning, I feel like it really helps my makeup to just stay there and just stick to my face. And oh. yeah, like a, like a second skin. So, so take your time. The best tip I ever got from a drag queen, I said this so mm. many times on the podcast, but is baking. So putting your under eye concealer on and letting it like True. set into your skin or powder. So that's kind of a True. similar tip. It's just, you really have to take your time and let it set between each stage. True, yeah, exactly. So you just have to, yeah. Take, and also taking your time is the best makeup advice you can take. Because, like, you you have to, like, get better and you have to, you know, you can't just do, like, a line. The first times you're going to do a liner, it's never going to be easy. And if you kind of rush yourself, you're never going to get good and you're never going to learn how to do it. So the, the slower you go and, you know, if you really take your time to do it perfectly, then it's going to, the, the more you're going to do it, the, better, the, the quickest it's going to go. So, yeah. Don't be rushed. I know we only have you for a few more minutes. So I do need to say because... I had your song stuck in my head, or your verse, that Kiki wanna Kai Kai, but I don't Kai Kai. Kai. And I was, I uh -huh. honestly sang that in my head for a week. But do you really so know have a single crush on a single of the contestants <gasps> there? You tell me none of them are your type. No, oh my God. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I get this question asked a lot, and <laughs> I'm known for being a Kai Kai queen. Like, you know, I, I'm just attracted to, I, I'm just attracted to, I think, like, creative people and people that really you know like that you know androgynous people as well and I I love I love all types actually so like you know I would kai kai with most of the queens in the show 
But, uh, yeah. you're, such a, you're such <laughs> a millennial too, because you're like, I just like everybody. And I find that yeah. millennials are just so open when it comes to that. Like, I don't care what you identify with. I just love everybody. Yeah, exactly. I, I really do. And like, you know, I feel like, yeah, there, there would be some queens that I would take my with on the show. And, uh, you know, like, my, I've only been in a relationship once and it was a drag queen as well. So, like, you know, I love everybody and everybody's beautiful. Oh. And how about that Jeffrey Boyer Chapman? Hello. <laughs> oh, my God. He, yeah, honey. Yeah, he, he's, uh, yeah. JBC. 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 Yeah. And the pit crew. <laughs> I mean, we could go on. Everybody's beautiful on that show. Yes, I know. Number seven. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so final question, and it's a serious one. Did your time on Drag okay. Race leave you with any life lessons that you can apply to your real life? Like, you know, don't sweat the small stuff, or, you know, don't wear bright red lipstick, or I don't know. Just don't do Mariah Carey <laughs> during the Smash Don't game. do Mariah Carey. Yeah, exactly. I think that was my biggest life lesson. Don't do Mariah Carey. Ignore I'm Mariah. But, yeah, no, um, I feel like um, my biggest life lesson is not to doubt myself that much. I felt like, you know, like, I, I, don't really, I didn't really like the show, but, like, still, you know, I felt like, I had, like, some moments where I was not, like, as confident or where I, you know, kind of doubted myself or just, you know, like, was doing something just to be safe. And I feel like I, I should have, you know, like, now I always try to go all the way and do my best all the time and just, you know, like, don't doubt myself and I trust my gut a lot more. And, yeah, I feel like it's just confidence in general and not waiting for anybody's approval to think that I'm just that good, you know, like, uh, right. I, I think I am. Well, I can't <laughs> wait to see what you have coming up in the future because I think you have a huge Thank career you. ahead of you. Yeah. Don't wait for anybody's approval unless it's the producers asking you to come back to All Stars. <laughs> I, I, we'll exactly, take that yeah. <laughs> I now go one, frolic yeah. on the beach like the Little Mermaid you look like right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Kiara <laughs> from Canada's Drag Race, living her best life, photo shoots on the beach. I'm jealous. <laughs> Thank you for chatting with us today. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much for all coming. Cheers. <laughs>